welcome back to the car doctor studios thanks for stopping by the shop and today i got a tip for certain year models and makes of subaru products this particular tip should apply to 06 through 2011 subaru imprezas outbacks foresters legacies with the 25 motor the vehicle i'm working on today is actually a 2009 it's got the 2.5 variable valve lift motor. This is normally aspirated. And the customer made an appointment to see us after the check engine light illuminated, the vehicle stability control light, along with the ABS light, also illuminated and scared the crap out of them. So they made an appointment and I got the vehicle in pulled the codes and in this case we pulled a P0028 however this tips also going to cover a P0026 you may have both of those codes uh, illuminated uh, with the illuminated light on your vehicle in some cases so this tip should apply to all that well basically the uh, codes P0026 and 28 are going to refer to the variable valve lift oil pressure diagnostic circuit and the PCM is going to recognize a fault in that circuit for an improper reading and there's going to be a couple most common problems associated with it one being the switch itself which is like an oil pressure switch not to be confused with the oil pressure switch in the center of the engine block above the crank pulley these are individual sensors on the bank one and bank two. Bank two in this case for the P0028 uh, is the left bank, the driver's side of the motor. That sensor is located in the front of the left cylinder head on the top. And it's basically just behind the oil fill tube area and it's accessible right there on top. The bank one, if you're dealing with the P0026 is going to be later, uh, going to be uh, located on the right rear cylinder head and it's just in front of the variable valve lift solenoid uh, but it's also accessible on top of the cylinder head on on the right side of the motor you'll probably have to pull the air intake duct to access that and to run any testing or replace the switch itself the part is relatively inexpensive, so in most cases, if I get this code, regardless of the actual cause, I'm going to probably be throwing a switch at it just because it's a common failure, and uh, I, I want to make sure that it doesn't come back and, and uh, pop these lights on again because it really freaks out some of the people when all the lights come on. It scares the crap out of them. But anyway, in this case, the first order of business was to check the oil level which is another common problem that arises when these codes exist. And in this case, the oil was very low, at least a quart and a half low, and it was really black and gooey. And I checked the oil reminder sticker on the windshield, and it had been about 12,000 miles since the last oil change. This rig's got 80,000 miles, and it's beginning to develop the common uh, cylinder head gasket oil leakage uh, usually on the left bank it's towards the rear of the cylinder head on the bottom leaking out kind of above the steering rack and pinion and normally on the front of the bank one head you'll see oil leakage there as well so that's a contributing factor in the low oil level along with the fact that it just hasn't been changed regularly so that too is an alarming uh, discovery in that uh, it most likely is was at times not developing proper oil level especially here in Alaska There's a lot of cold start situations where the oil is very thick and uh, viscosity breaks down of uh, course over time when it isn't changed properly so that actually in this case is the most likely cause of the problem there's the diagnostic routine we can go through the flow chart for this code and uh, it involves disconnecting the sensor and checking the feedback on that circuit, also doing a resistance check on the sensor itself. And we can also monitor that 
the operation of it with the scan tool. But with what I found so far, and what I know to be the case 90% of the time, uh, I'm gonna probably just save the customer some money. Uh, we're getting good oil pressure, I know that, uh, after I've uh, installed a quart of actual crankcase cleaner product into the vehicle and let it run. I've monitored that and I'm sure that the, it's not an oil pressure problem, at least not with a proper level of oil. So what I'm gonna do is just basically run this crankcase cleaner uh, for a bit here and then I'm gonna drain and service the oil and filter and then I'm going to replace the oil pressure switch on the left bank and uh, basically that's just a simple process of disconnecting the electrical connector at the top of the sensor and then uh, putting a socket down over it and removing that switch making sure that the area is clean around the base of the switch on top of the cylinder head it tends to collect a lot of dirt deposits and crap there so you might just blow it off with compressed air or some type of cleaner and then uh, remove the sensor and then you want to put a little bit of sealant around the threads of the replacement sensor. In this case, I purchased a CarQuest sensor, so I uh, got the part number here in the video. And I uh, went ahead and put some sealant around the threads, making sure that I didn't get sealant up in the sensor, of course. That wouldn't be good. And then just reinstalled it and torqued properly, reconnected the electrical connector, and now uh, just a case of clearing the codes and confirming that the repair uh, was successful. And at this case, in, in this case, it, it was. And we should have another happy customer back on the road. I'm probably gonna, you know, I'm gonna let them know about the head gasket leakage and something to uh, think about for the future here. Probably gonna be due for, uh, you know, the usual timing belt and water pump and head gaskets. But uh, that's going to be for another day. But uh, for today, we've had great success here. Appreciate you coming by the shop. Big shout out to Shane for the hat. I appreciate that, bro. Um, you know, the crappy auto tech hat. I guess you figured I needed that. But uh, hey, I'll wear it with pride, buddy. Appreciate that. No, really, Shane's my buddy. He works over at Cat. And uh, he's going to be featured in one of these videos to come if I can talk him into to coming down to the shop and hanging out for a bit. Thanks for coming by. Thanks for liking my videos and subscribing to the Car Doctor channel, and I will look forward to seeing you again soon. Have a good one, and good luck with your repairs.